Hello everyone and uh, welcome to uh, another edition of In The Metal Live on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, as you might know by now, In The Metal, every week we go and take a look at the uh, behind the scenes, behind the dial of the independent watchmaking sector. And each week we get the opportunity to talk to some of the amazing talents who are creating these exceptional timepieces and uh, and this week it is no exception so uh, this week we uh, will be going over to France to the shores of uh, Lake Annecy and we will be talking to a, a true prodigy of uh, what independent watchmaking young guy half my age he's actually less than half my age and uh, he's already set up in his own atelier He's created his first masterpiece, and uh, like if you if you like detail, this guy is absolutely molecular in his attention to detail. So, uh, as usual, uh, I could not possibly do this on my own. So, I am going to see if I can reach across the Atlantic pond and catch up with my good old pal who is former anthrax hard rock trash metal rocker and now master watchmaker in the u.s mr dan spitz dan are we connecting what's going on my fucking furry furry friend <laughs> that's it i don't get any money off this one literally youtube i was yeah. with this one already like you know yeah, we may as well go all the way here like you we'll know, start so. this one right off the way it should be why the hell not you yeah, absolutely <laughs> like you know <laughs> so uh, uh fantastic you do, you, you how are things going with you and uh how's your your how are you getting on with your uh your masterpiece absolutely amazing uh as you know all of this takes time and uh for the art of perfection and uh we're i'm um, steaming along here we're doing the final bridges uh in steel on the dial side and at the same time i'm uh restoring some machines here um and you're measuring uh machine and some other th machines here that i'm building i'm always kind of building stuff and restoring i like to buy old machines and then find the parts to them uh, yeah that might be missing and complete them and the shop needs a few more machines well, it always needs machines <laughs> we love you're, we you're love machines as watchmakers so all good uh and uh, we'll start assembly and uh, some wheel and pinion, more wheel and pinion making here soon. Fantastic. Kicking butt. Kicking so butt, kick butt, taking numbers. Uh, but uh, I've been in, I, I gotta get a root canal. So I got like Mike Tyson's punching my face for the last three days, big time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm a little bit out of it that way. But let's talk about Remy Cools. Remy Cools. Remy hey. Cools. At age 13, you were in your first band, you were playing bars and you were kicking up a racket. At uh, age 11, Remy Cools was uh, checking out his first uh, uh, atelier in uh, in Switzerland. And I think he was uh, getting the bug for watchmaking. And, uh, you know, at age 24, I think he's just turned 24. Uh, he certainly was born in 90, 1997. My God, I was I was approaching retirement age in 1997. You know, he, he was born when I was in Wostep in Neuchatel. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't matter. He's, he, you know, he's um uh, his what he's doing and the path to get the path that he's taken to get where he is is uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's the right way. This is all supposed to be done. We'll get into that later. But you know, six years of traditional schooling. Uh, you know, in-depth study. It's like, I try to explain to people, it's longer for us to be schooled than it is for a doctor. Nobody seems to really get that or grasp it. You know, it's six years of schooling for him. And then you, and then you still don't really know anything. We still have to go out and start. And he's just taken that uh, traditional path and it's really shown. And, you know, to win a uh, uh, the Francois uh, Jean Award for his clock coming out of school, yeah, right, and giving a grant, which is something we're trying to do here in America. What I'm trying to uh, put together here, stuff like that. 
and uh, and then to go on for for to produce this incredible timepiece that pretty much shocked us all, right? I mean, it's it, 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 look, it, yeah, but it is old school, and uh, you know, you look at the route this young lad has taken to uh, to get to where he's at. Do you know, as we mentioned with FP during the uh, Young Talent Award at SAKH in uh, 2018. FP Jorn is known for one, for he's known for a, being a massively talented watchmaker, but he's also known for not tolerating any crap. And he, <laughs> so if you don't cut it, he ain't going to cover you in platitudes and say, oh, how good you are. If you're going to yeah. impress FP Jorn, it's because you have done something pretty damn impressive mm -hmm. to do it with him, you know. Well, so, obviously, well, obviously he chose the right dude because look what we got, right? I do know my style from based on my time pieces, you know, it's got to be uh, built better than, a, a, you know, a, a pocket watch from 200 years ago and resemble uh, the craftsmanship and that kind of uh, tradition that we have in watchmaking. And he nailed it, you know, coming out of the gate that way is very difficult. And, uh, and to put that together at such a young age, you can tell he's determined and, uh, and he's definitely going to shake us up. Without a doubt, a name to look out for now and ongoing. So, uh, you know, the uh, the independent sector is in good hands. Let's go across to Lake Annecy and w say, Bienvenue, Remy Cruz. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> hey, Remy. How you doing, brother? I'm well and you. Excellent. It's good to have you on the show, and we greatly appreciate your valuable Thank you. time. Thank you uh, for the invitation, too. Uh, we, we know you'd rather be sitting at the bench and making another masterpiece for somebody else. Um, yes. <laughs> so to take the time out to speak to not just us, but to speak to the world and, uh, and tell everyone what really is inside you as a, as a human being and a watchmaker, is, it's, it's going to be really cool today. Cool. Get Thank it? You. Cool. 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 Yeah. Oh, terrible, man. Oh, Dude, like right off the bat, I gotta go there because no, I don't think anyone else has. You have the coolest freaking name. It's like if, <laughs> if, if me and you and Johnny started a band, like you would be the singer, but you'd come in like the first day, like to try out, and you, what's your name, bro? Oh, cools, man. Cools. And we we think you changed your name, for, you know, stage name, <laughs> but it's not. It's like you got that badass name, right? 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 Going out <laughs> Thank the you. Thank you. That's kill. So uh, I filled most of the people in on uh, some of your schooling. You did uh, six years of schooling and one yes. in, a, in, a, in a very incredible school. Uh, if you'd like to speak in your own terms and let everyone know your, your short path to where you got to where you are uh, today, that would be cool. It's kind of fill us in. Okay. Okay. Uh, you want um, you want to, uh, to tell you my uh, my apprenticeship in my um, mm -hmm. in my uh, watchmaking school. Mm -hmm. I um, uh, I start in uh, 2012, um, and uh, after uh, in France uh, we have three step of um, of uh, study. The first step in two year, the second step in two year, and the third step in two year, all six year and. Uh, all uh, when you upgrade a step, the, um, we have less and less people on the classroom. Mm -hmm. It's uh, we uh, it has a selection of people, and um, I start uh, in 2015. Uh, my uh, clock, uh, my turbine clock, uh, uh, with uh, with I won the, the young talent competition organized by uh, France, by uh, François Paul Journe and uh, the Fondation de la Haute Horlogerie. And uh, after his uh, four years study, uh, you have to present uh, a piece or um, uh, a mechanical clock, watches, or it's uh, it's a them or it's a, it's a project. Uh, the, the school imp, uh, impose a project to you and uh, all the, the the students, and for uh, for have your uh, your 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 dip, uh, your uh, sorry your diploma, mm -hmm. you you have to build your uh, your watches, your clock, or anything uh, in uh, watchmaking. It's the first. Uh, at the end of the four, uh, the four, uh, four year, 
I, uh, I built this, uh, this clock and two years later, in 2018, uh, at my end of my studies, I uh, built the school watches, my two million school watches. Mm. And uh, in the, the training, or the apprenticeship of uh, uh, in all the six years, uh, you at the first you you learn uh, how uh, how um, uh, sorry <laughs> I lost uh, you're okay I man. lost the I lost the word how works a watch uh, how uh, repairing the watch is the first step in watchmaking and after uh, you learn complication you learn restoration you learn to uh, how build or how machining the parts uh, how conceive the the watch or the complication and uh, after the two, uh, the two last year of studies is exclusively uh, um, in restoration and conception. Mm. Okay. Amazing what you've, uh, the, the steps that you've been through. But what really strikes me is the maturity of, uh, of your work. And I'm just going to get an image shortly here. You guys chat on. I'm going to get a, an image of your... Uh, Turbion clock, which I should have already had ready to go, but we'll get this up in a second. So, um, so uh, from from building the Turbion clock and winning uh, the award, you knew your path. I mean, you knew your path at a very young age, anyway. I think, but uh, to to be determined to go through six years of schooling, um, that's incredible. Uh, uh, there's a few of us that know that feeling, but to come out of school and then be free and go, okay. Now I can really create um, uh, that. That's where the explosion happens, right? You, you're like, oh, okay, I did my clock. I did my tourbillon clock. I, I won my awards. I must be doing something right, but I really want to make a wristwatch, right? How do I, sh yes, how, do, it's, uh, how do I shrink it down and, and come up with my own style? Um, so to do that at your age and uh, coming out of school and not really – copy anybody else and say, hey, I'd like to buy a, a, an old movement, right? a, an old Valjou and restore it and make my own dial and maybe change a little something and put a complication on it. You didn't do that. There's your, there's your clock. I mean, come on. Yeah, thank you to Quill and Pad and to Beth Doerr for uh, letting me, <laughs> well, for, for I have used your image. So thank you in advance. So, uh, yeah, this is a uh, Exceptional uh, piece. This is what this was what impressed uh, Francois Paul Jean uh, to give you the to decide that you were the uh, the winner of the Young Talent Award at SAHS. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. It's uh, it's Francois Paul Jean and uh, another um, jury of uh, watchmakers. Uh, he, he, uh, sorry, he, he elected uh, three people to uh, to uh, win to uh, win, sorry the the prize. And uh, this year, I'm not the only one. I uh, I have two uh, two colleagues uh, who won the prize too, and the 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 three people uh, comes to uh, to the same uh, same watchmaking school. Yeah. So wait, wait, wait. What, are you saying that you have two other people that work with you from the same watchmaking no, school? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, yes, it's uh, the, the three people um, were won uh, the the prize uh, this year in 2018. Uh, comes uh, come to the, oh, oh, the they, they all come the from watchmaking school. school. I got, I got yes, you. yes. So he, all, he doing all... he doing their apprenticeship, he doing uh, their apprenticeship uh, in the school. Okay, so three three people that won the prize, uh, two next to you, they also were from your school, correct? Yes. Uh, yes. So, so your school, we, we, your, uh, your, your school produces some incredible uh, watchmakers, obviously. Yes, and uh, the same uh, this year in 2018, all the uh, most uh, important uh, uh, watchmaking competition in uh, for the students. Uh, was uh, was winning by uh, four people, all French and all um, do the, the apprenticeship in the in the watchmaking school. 
What is the name of the school that you went to? The Lycée Edgar Faure uh, in uh, Morteau. In, uh, is it next to the Swiss border? Next mm -hmm. to La Chaux de Fonds, uh, Le Loc. Okay, La Chaux de Fonds. Um, so obviously, in your school, must differ than many other schools and really uh, concentrate a lot on creating your own main plates, your own bridges, and not just modifying uh, a 6498 or 6497, but really take the time to, uh, to study the manufacture of a timepiece and the arrangement of the wheels and everything uh, like that uh, and differentiates itself from many other schools, correct? Uh, yes, yes, but uh, after we, we haven't no uh, big time to, uh, for example, uh, for the, the, the project of my school watches, uh, it takes eight months and uh, during the eight months, uh, we we uh, we have not all in the in the workshop. We have another uh, another uh, like French, uh, like mathematics, like other uh, study. Uh, I don't know in English uh, what I mean, but um, another uh, uh, sorry um, curriculum. In uh, yes. Uh, in the eight month when you are study uh, in the in the watchmaking school, you don't pass all your time at the at the workshop at the workbench. We we have uh, many and many different. Um, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, I don't. Uh, I don't, okay. uh, I don't That's okay. Take your time. We're not in any rush. Totally. Yeah. Just re absolutely relax. So are you trying? Are you trying to say? You, even even during the eight months that it took you to make the your Tobion clock, that you still had other school to, to do. Yeah, of a school um, of mm -hmm. school work. Mm -hmm. That's what you're trying to say, right? So it's not just yes. hey, you, that's not just that the school said you okay now you no we more have, no more yes. school you just create go on yes, the no more, board. no more school so yes, you, yes you have to do along yes. with with your mathematics yes. With, Everything else. And you stuff. have to switch in the two in the two phase of the watch of the of the school the watchmaking watchmaking parts and the other parts it's a normal part like a normal student. Yeah. And we have to switch uh, on the watchmaking on normal on watchmaking and you you don't uh, you don't pass all your time at the workbench. Right. I understand. So you're doing school mathematics calculus. Along with the, yes, you go back uh, onto the house of Jig Bar and the Shaolin. You have to do everything. Yes, mm -hmm. and when you are in the workshop, uh, you 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 uh, you have to um, to uh, work with uh, with rapidity and uh, and uh, it, uh, yeah. it's it's very intense. Yeah, but you know that's that's what produces the producers. It's the, it was the same way uh, when I went to Wolstep. Uh, it's uh, the school is open all the time. And you have to, you're studying escapement or you're studying complications. Uh, but in addition, okay, then come in at night if you want to make something or, and it's, it's that drive and that driven, that ambition that creates, uh, that, that drives us, you know, teaches us for later. After school, we're going to be on our own. So should we just sleep half the day and work half the day? Or should we, <laughs> should we really work? You know, it's, uh, yes, yes, we're, yes. We're, we're in it for ourselves and what we do is, uh, as micro mechanics, it's a very slow and meticulous process where it's only done when we think and we know it's done, right? With no error, zero yes. error. So it's a good training, and it looks like it worked for you for sure. You're you're a wonderful driven uh, watchmaker. That's just it's just incredible what you've done, man. In such a short <laughs> period, of, right, John? Is what we're trying to show is that it's just in a short period of time. This is. Yes, it's very, yeah. very short. It's not, it's not normal. <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you something. It, it, you know, listening to that uh, explanation about the, the Lise Edgar IV, um, yeah. is it, it, it says something about the quality of the instructors as well, uh, Remy, that allowed you to flourish and find your, uh, ref, refine your, your skill as, as well. Uh, uh, as well as the talent that you have been born with, mm -hmm. uh, the, the school obviously it, you, you're a great testament to well, I, essentially a polytechnic. 
I think, is it? Yeah. No, I think it's not the same like Polytechnic, but uh, uh, we have the, I have the chance to, uh, to have um, many and many uh, good teachers uh, uh, in, in, uh, in my school, uh, watchmaking school. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's one, of the, one of the best things when, when you have a good teacher and the teacher um, uh, um, tra transmitting uh, his passion for the watchmaking and his passion for watches, you yeah. you learn, you learn, you learn, you learn, you learn. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, I, I think, uh, I know I follow your school on Instagram for a long time, and I also follow one of your instructors. I can't remember his name offhand, but I know he's making his own timepiece now. Uh, so, you know, what me and Johnny try to, sh try to show with each person and watchmaker that we interview is that times are changing, and the way young watchmakers like you uh, need to be trained it is different now because of independent watchmaking that is here now and here for the future for you. That has changed since when I went to school. When I went to school, the curriculum was more geared towards uh, uh, after sales service or uh, complications or vintage restorations. We have to learn that no matter what. But I think all of the schools need to shift a little bit, like your school. <laughs> or like K&H, uh, uh, on week school, which I'm always pushing, uh, where you know, the student is given a long and a lot of time and freedom to create his own timepiece and learn about independent watchmaking, not just make a bridge, not just file, but make gears, make pinions, make main plates, finishing, finishing is extremely just, important. Just make a, just make a component Mm -hmm. Just make a component when you uh, when you don't uh, uh, when you don't know uh, when the machine uh, works and uh, how how machining uh, a simple component at the beginning is very hard and the teacher uh, learn you he, he show you the technique or the skills to uh, to to build to, to machining that. And it's very important to uh, to have the, the the teacher have the skills. Yeah, yeah. Because even even just for restorations, everything has changed since 1998 or 1988 when the last generation of watchmakers, I, I view, it, is trained for that generation. Because those vintage watches back then, even the values that I used to do, uh, uh, you know, or um, what was it? just all of them, whatever they may have been, whatever, whatever ebosh they were, there were still parts available. So it was, you didn't really, weren't really trained too much uh, to make pinions from scratch, uh, to work on the jig bore, uh, you know, to make parts from scratch. But times have changed. There's no more parts even for them. So in every school, we really, I think the students really need to be trained a time on the hauser, right? To make springs, <laughs> okay? make detent springs. <laughs> make wheels, make pinions, make main plates, make bridges, because there's no more parts and we need to keep even those watches alive. Even mm -hmm. if someone comes out of school and they don't want to make their own timepiece like you did, and they want to go into restoration, restoration has changed, is my point. And, and we need to shift all of the schools to have those machines in the schools like you had, right? Like K&H has, and really push that forward uh, for, for watchmaking. So anyway, let's move forward from there because um, you know, what, the work you do obviously is meticulous. It's, uh, it's, it's unique to you, but also based on tradition, 110%. Um, yes. so we, <laughs> we know where you're going. We know some of your influences right now in your life by looking at what you produce. And it, it really is uh, incredible what you've done uh, so far. Thank you. So, Thank so, you. So after school, you decide to, to go in and start your own timepiece. Right, wristwatch. Uh, not after school. After school, I, uh, I leave uh, the school to uh, to join the Global Force Manufacturer in La mm -hmm. and and uh, I have the, the chance to uh, to work uh, in the uh, in the incredible uh, brand, and uh, I joined the tra uh, l'atelier tradition, the tradition workshop of uh, Global Force. Mm -hmm. And uh, I work uh, with the with the team of talented people uh, to uh, to uh, build and to uh, to machining the the different parts of the handmade one watch. 
Mm. And for me, it's uh, it's incredible to to have uh, uh, to have participate uh, on the on this project, and uh, I uh, I really uh, I have really the chance to uh, to to participate uh, uh, as this project, and uh, and I thank you uh, Global Force for for that. Oh. Yeah, I I think we'll, we'll go back to the clock here for a second, uh, Dan, yes. um, because what what uh, Remy has just met, he just said, so he, after he finished his schooling, after he had uh, he had presented this uh, amazing clock, um, the tourbillon clock, it is absolutely beautiful. You, you, you could you could produce them on their own, and they would they would do well for you. But to move then to the Atelier de Tradition at Groibel Force, that is a hell of a place to learn <laughs> and refine your craft. Groibel Force, for anyone who's watching that isn't quite familiar, are the benchmark of uh, absolute meticulous flawless finishing, uh, incredible innovation and invention. And what the uh, Atelier de Tradition was, uh, where you were to make a watch in the old way. This is you uh, without any CNC or computing or any kind of uh, uh, tools or a computerized assistance. This, uh, uh, the Atelier de Tradition was old school down. This was, uh, everything was made in the way that it used to be before we had all these modern conveniences. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, what an experience uh, that was. So, uh, right. so, I, I, so is this where you met our good friend, Luc Monet? Because I know he was uh, one of the yes. team, <laughs> he's one of the team leaders. Once again, guys, yes. ghost builders, right? I keep telling you, you didn't know it. <laughs> Before me and Johnny were on the scene here, right? You didn't know anything what a ghost builder was, right? You thought the company made all those special watches. Well, the joke's on you. It's, it's, all, okay, yeah, yeah. it's all our friends, okay? It's like the music, like I keep saying, when, when someone else has uh, in, in music has, writes their song and you think it's the pop star's song and she wrote it, you know? It's not her song. It's a professional songwriter who knows how to write hits. Well, there's a group of very talented watchmakers. Uh, I'm, yes. I'm, you, you'll keep seeing in our show with Johnny that one name keeps coming up. My good friend, Luc Monet in France, who's a loving, helping watchmaker. And he was also uh, part of the head of that team because he makes parts uh, by hand for other companies. Yes, yes, for, uh, for the, uh, the project, yes. Mm -hmm. And, and recently, Luke has helped you. I know he helped uh, modify and build your new your new Hauser jig borer uh, for your workshop. Correct? Uh, sorry. So Luke, Luke, uh, recently yes. uh, he uh, he fixed up and restored your new Hauser uh, pointer, ah, yes, the uh, pointer machine. Uh, an HK uh, motor. Yeah, he, yeah, yes, he gave you a good yes. spin up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Now, so, thank well, you, thank you. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, Luke. Right? So what we're trying to show is there's a loving community behind the scenes. So Luke doesn't not ha he doesn't have to do things for other watchmakers. He's very busy. He makes parts for people. He does all kinds of stuff. But we all like to help, especially young watchmakers like Remy, uh, get the tools they need in their hands to get to the next level and do what they love. And, and Luke does that. And so anyway, he restored a machine um, to modern day technology uh, changing the spindle to a very high-speed spindle that he's come up with a modification to do to our, to the houses, and uh, it's more so, it's more easy to use. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, hey, should we take a look at the uh, tourbillon's uh, subscription, and uh, we'll just take a a, a look at uh, a, an image of of the watch before we get into the detail. Um, That's no problem. Yeah, because this watch just blew me away uh, when I first saw this. Uh, it is... Wow. It, it's just, it is old school tradition. And what really impresses me about what, what's happening here is that you young guys, Remy, Cyril, Luke, you, you're working 
uh, you, your inspiration seems to be coming from the 17th century pocket watches uh, with the, the frosted gold uh, surfacing, etc., and the open worked three dimensional dials. They're, they're kind of retro, but they're really contemporary too. And uh, so this is the Tourbillon Suscription. And uh, following a business model adopted by Bregway and then indeed by F.P. Jordan himself in 1998. And yes. uh, so what an absolutely spectacularly beautiful and pure and honest old school piece of work that is. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Mind yeah. blown. It's mind blown. Look, uh, I mean, I don't know what you think you produce. So sometimes it's good to have others uh, tell, tell you, like, you know, it, it, you, you kick some serious ass with this one. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this, is, this is something you, you would see uh, somebody of, of my age and my uh, long term experience maybe take a very long time to produce. So that's why we're so enamored with your talent that at such a young age, uh, like Johnny said, you have a vision uh, of what's inside of you and, and the masters that you loved and it's come out of you at, right away. Uh, and, uh, it's beautiful, man. Absolutely beautiful. And, uh, and also, and also a, be a beautiful business model that you have the subscription. Uh, and if you could explain that to others that maybe that they do not know what that means and where that came from and, and how uh, that business model works and then we'll get into the watch. Yes, no problem. The, the subscription uh, was uh, was adopted by Breguet uh, after the, the French uh, Revolution, and um, it's uh, he he had money to uh, to do the watch, and uh, with uh, more uh, less uh, less price uh, uh, of the watch, as uh, the customer, the client uh, paid fifty percent of, of the watch uh, now at the order and mm -hmm. after he pays the rest of the 50 percent sorry at the delivery and like that Breguet have uh, 50 percent money to to do uh, to uh, to pay some uh, watchmaker to pay uh, uh, all uh, all of thing to to build the watch mm. buy a house yeah <laughs> 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 most of most of, let's be honest, right, Remy? We usually take 85% of that money and we buy a machine with it or two machines to help what we do because um, machines help us create, uh, not just get done what, what's on paper, but it brings out. Yes, brings yes and, uh, and simply if, if, you, if, you, uh, if you haven't machine, you can work. You can't work. Right. And machines are very expensive, but lucky for your generation, uh, the machines from the past generations now, they can be restored and they're somewhat, somewhat, they were within reach, let's say, where my generation, they were, you, it was impossible. They were all still brand new and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars yes, uh, yes. For, for each machine, if not, if not a million. Um, yes. And, and now those machines uh, are, we can have the old machines and do things uh, by hand with the machines. Uh, because CNC has taken over most of every operation in the big companies, so they get rid of these machines, and we and we we want them, so send send them over to us. <laughs> yeah. more machines. Huh? I mean, I'm building it. It's the lifeblood of the watchmaker, isn't it? The subscription model is the lifeblood of the watchmaker because yeah. th that means that you 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 you've you're selling your you've basically sold your watch before you've made it. You haven't sold it fully. You, you've got 50% of yes. the, the value of the watch up front from the customer. And that enables you, it, 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 it allows you, as Dan says, to invest in the tools to uh, th that you're not struggling to, uh, to, to manufacture your first piece uh, waiting for the the payment to come in at the end of it, and even as we said, FP Jurn, I noted when I was reading uh, over the last few days, uh, Remy FP Jurn used a similar model in nineteen ninety six, 
for and, his yeah. first uh, 20 series of uh, his first uh, yes 20 pieces of the the first 20 uh, tourbillon souverains so, so, uh, yeah whatever happened to him you know so <laughs> <laughs> you know i don't think people really truly understand how much money it really takes to go on that endeavor of, of what remy's doing or what i'm doing to to really produce in-house yourself uh, you know the main plates and, and we need special machines we need I mean it's endless amounts of things it's not like a little watchmaker lathe uh, and, and you know and a cleaning machine like that's not going to cut it nowadays uh, we need to make more than one watch per year so it is very 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 expensive to just just a basic yes. setup to get out of the gate so this uh, business model uh, of the subscription is, is is what we're all using basically if not even furthering it and uh it's the best way to do it because we're, we're not tied to anybody. We're not going to a bank to try to get a loan, which in my country would be impossible. Uh, and it, it gives us freedom to get the machines we need and produce masterpieces, you know, and yeah. obviously that's, and, that's and, what Remy's and what a masterpiece it is. And uh, mm -hmm. Remy has very kindly provided me with uh, several images down that mm -hmm. uh, really go in depth uh, on the tourbillon subscription and uh, man, whenever you've seen the detail here you will ask yourself do you know the way we, we think you know ah oh, young people <laughs> they don't have enough experience well, let me tell you and this guy is frightening <laughs> in his attention to detail like you know so um so yeah the, the first thing you notice about the the Turbion Souverain. Do you notice anything that is it missing, Dan, or something that you might expect to see on a modern wristwatch? Tell me, Johnny. I don't see it. It's usually at three o'clock on the side of the case. And, uh, oh, the crown. You know, oh, the yeah, you crown. Want it? Oh, okay, well, flip it over. Let's see the back wind, bro. That's how when we do that. So, uh, <laughs> I thought that was some kind of real trick question. <laughs> well, hey, you never know from me, like, you know, it could be really intelligent or it could be utter, utter bullshit, like, you know, so uh, thankfully on this occasion, <laughs> it was okay. So, um, so crownless, so this is the back of the Tourbillon subscription, and what we have here is something, because the crown is a relatively new uh, innovation, if we say relatively new, so it's maybe a hundred and maybe a hundred and fifty, two hundred years since the first big crowns appeared on the top of the pocket watches. But prior to that, how were you to wind something up? And it was in the same way as you would wind up a clockwork toy or something like that. There, so you have two keys, so to speak, on the back of of the the watch, and that's one winds the movement. And the other is to adjust the setting of the hands. And wow, isn't that just absolutely amazing? So, so Remy, tell us why you decided to, to ditch the crown and uh, where this, why you decided to, to uh, style your watch with this uh, complications. Uh, I really want to, to keep the, the two crown uh, the two crowns on the back of the watch because uh, my uh, my first series of uh, Tobio subscription uh, I really want to to um, to uh, is an evolution of my school watches uh, my school watch sorry and my school watch have the two uh, the two crowns on the back and I, I really want to keep that because I, for me, it's very important for uh, for the DNA of the piece. For uh, I, the, the watch is very uh, recognizable uh, with that. Uh, it's it's an important part of the watch, and uh, yes, it's uh, it's uh, one more complication uh, on the on the product. But uh, I really want to keep that. Well, it, it's it's a great execution. And uh, one that I haven't seen with the uh, with the um, the half glass in the back, and not just a, a full glass, maybe like Cyril's watch, um, which is also back wind. Uh, yeah. So you, you don't have to drill the glass, um, but you went all go went ahead and made it all part of the back of the case, uh, which gives it a good, really good sturdiness 
uh, for longevity reasons. So if you're wondering, if anyone's watching and wondering how it all works, uh, you just kind of flip up one of the little levers yes. there and uh, turn it like, a, like an old uh, vintage uh, uh, clock and wind it up and then pop it back down so it does sit beautifully flush on your wrist. It doesn't uh, catch on your, the hairs of your wrist if you're a man or, or anything of the sort. It's very fluid and uh, ergonomic. And the same thing for the time. You flip it up and you set your time and you don't need a, you don't need a bench key. You don't need anything. It's uh, self-contained. It's more you do it. simple, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's elegant and you know it, it, it it's perfect. It it works it works beautifully, and uh, so I, I love it. I am a fan of of anything that is you know a, a little bit uh, left of center, a little bit of a little bit the uh, rive gauche that uh, you know. And to me, it, it's a beautiful a beautiful solution uh, that. It was not necessary, but it adds hugely to the the watch. Now, I've just got a question in Remy from yes. Captain Forrest, and um, he asked me a brilliant question last week, and we didn't get a chance to get round to it. And um, we'll be talking about this very, very shortly, but it's about the beveling and about the the anglage. And I don't know if you can see that question, but. When you do the finishing on the bridges and the plates, what is the order? Do you do the beveling, the anglage, or the chamfering uh, first, and then the top finishing, or how is that done? For the um, the frosted part. Uh, sorry, I just uh, I yes. Just I, 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 question. So I think it's the Remy, Remy, yes. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, yes, first I do the um, I do the the micro blasting, uh, finely micro blasting of the of the parts. It's uh, um, when you look the part is very uh, very uh, not rough, but um, it's uh, uh, like that. You you um, you see the the, the barrel bridges and uh, it's gray. And we have two um, two colors. It's uh, gold or gray. And yes. uh, first, I do the, the frosted, the, the micro blasting, uh, finely micro blasting on the on the ports, and after I do all the anglage or uh, or moulure uh, or polishing uh, everything. Exactly. But first, the, the first operation is uh, micro blasting, finely micro blasting. So you're using a, a machine, the micro blaster, a glass bead machine. Uh, yes, but uh, it's very complicated to uh, to have the the right setting to uh, uh, to have this uh, particular uh, this um, this particular finishing. Yeah, I, I, I work uh, I work very hard and I uh, spend a long time to uh, to have the good uh, the all the good setting. Yeah, I know that uh, there's a few of us that I have one here too, and Mark Jenny has been using it uh, for a very long time. It's very hard. People think. Uh, uh, first of all, you have people to have think it. it's very easy. No, 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 no. It's not. No, it's, no, it's not. It's it, not easy. It's not easy. It's not. They think right, like, like, because they usually they know like a car mechanic, and they think we just blast yes, it. Yes, yes. But it's this is not. So this is something else that we should talk about. I was going to save it for maybe later on down the line because I have a a, a very special kind of a sandblaster as well. We we can't use regular sandblasters. They have to go down to very it's, small. It's too big. Small, it's too big. Small, like uh, small microns, uh, 25, 30 microns, and we have to mix yes, yes. It's just by trial and error, just like doing by hand, we have to mix different powders, and it's very expensive setup too, um, to do it correctly. So what Remy is trying to, yes. convey, to convey is, we don't just blast it, you know, it's, this is not like the CNC of sandblasting. This is extremely time consuming to, to get this right, to make it yes. uh, his own way. Uh, and that's, that's the beauty of, of utilize and it's still by hand, right? Remy, you have to spray by hand, uh, and it's up to you to, to make sure it comes out correct. So um, uh, that's really cool that you, that you do it that way. Very cool. I, I imagine that it is it's very difficult to get a uniform uh, surface. That, that, that yes, it, yes, it's it's the most complex, at, uh, and the, the second most complex thing is uh, is not to uh, to um, to uh, box the parts or uh, or everything uh, everything else. Yeah, mm. 
It's, it's, it's amazing because down we take these things for granted, really, don't we? When we're looking at a, a, at a watch, we, we, we think, you, oh, we're across the surface. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. But you can. Not- you guys, you, for her there. You, you guys take a lot of this for granted, but that's what me and you are about, Johnny, trying to show the world that it's not smoke and mirrors, that uh, you know, each artist is going to paint with their own tools. Okay, That's what independent watchmaking is about. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. Everyone finds a certain machine or a certain way that they want to present that. Even if it's that one piece within their art, the one bridge, and they want to decorate that bridge their way. Um, of course, you know, Anglage, we, we all we all use that. But even there, uh, Remy's Anglage is going to be different than my Anglage because yeah. we, both, we both do yes. it by hand. This is why we do it by hand. Yes. Otherwise, yeah. we, can pro- and- we can program a CNC machine and it would be beautiful, but it would be so perfect and so even around the but- corners and everywhere that it just looks sh- crappy. It looks like fake. It looks like an Eater. It's just crap. Yeah. <laughs> but the point, the point, the point is, Remy, right? It's it's our art, and we all we all do it differently and, and utilize. Some of the machines we use are the same, uh, but um, Remy is he's telling you, hey man, I didn't just spray it with a sandblaster, dude. This took months yes. and months, and, and I didn't even know what you know aluminum oxide of, of or research. Or, yeah, of glass, research yes. yeah, should should we use glass beads or should we use aluminum oxide? What should we use? And there's no book to read to find out. It's just hey. Let's just go mess with it and see what we come up with. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's it's, do it, it's wonderful to be getting into this kind of detail and uh, actually not just talking about a watch and how it looks and that there, but the, the level of detail that's going into this here. The, the so the, so Remy, are you? Uh, you you're right, John. Absolutely, that's that's what me and you are. Me and you are all about is, is getting the secrets out of the people and presenting them to the collectors so they can understand uh, the in depth of, of how long it takes and what someone like Remy has to do to create a masterpiece. Because uh, yes. it, it all looks good when it's all done, right? It's just presented to the collector and everyone's in awe. But it's really cool to really know um, how long things take and the research behind everybody and how, how their brain works. Remy, yeah. um, are you making uh, uh, your own pinions and wheels in your workshop uh, behind you? Some some of the parts of the of the tourbillon subscription um, uh, was made by me uh, in traditional way, uh, like the like the wheel. I, uh, here we we can see uh, the the row uh, row uh, wheel. It's a brass uh, stamp wheel. Um, it's a supplier. Uh, it made for me, special for me, with a special uh, design. And uh, after that, I um, I machining all the teeth one by one on my uh, my watchmaker lathe with a special uh, shaping tool. And after this operation, I do all the finishes on the on the on the wheel. Uh, uh, cycle brush and uh, anglage and uh, for example uh, on the anglage uh, we have uh, interior angles and uh, on just one wheel we have 20 interior angles it's the most difficult uh, things to do in uh, in anglage is the interior angles mm-hmm. well wow, so you and so you, you're using a, a- uh, your own design wheels, and you're having yes. them stamped, stamped outside, and then you use a uh, Shablin 70 to cut your own teeth? Yes. Okay. Uh, very amazing. And then hand decorated and, and just uh, incredible. And pinion, pinions, same way? S- some, some pinions. Not all the pinions, but some pinions I, um, I, uh, I made. And uh, for example, I made, uh, I made some screw. Uh, I made some uh, some bridge. I made uh, the dials. I made the hands. I made uh, oh, uh, I made uh, uh, for the first piece for the prototype. I made the balance wheel, mm-hmm. and uh, it's very complicated to uh, to make uh, a balance wheel. And uh, for that, for, for me, uh, my my series of subscription uh, watches, I don't want to. Um, I don't want to to refuse the modernity. I I 
my work, I want to my work was a link between um, past tradition and uh, contemporary uh, machining or, uh, or technologies. And I, I, I do, I, uh, I, um, I do some, uh, some parts in the traditional way and some parts in the CNC machine. But when I, um, when I, um, uh, sorry, when I uh, uh, order to make uh, some of the raw components of the watch by my supplier, the components, when it arrives at my workshop, is not finished, it's raw. It's very, very raw. And after I do all the finishing, and sometimes I, I do uh, some machining in my traditional, uh, in my tra uh, on my traditional machine. Mm -hmm. Fully understand. So you basically, uh, what we've, we've talked about this many times, you embrace modern technology for the certain parts yes. that you need, that you need to be the same every time. But, and this is the but for all uh, the collectors that are watching, the reason most of us do this uh, especially for the main plate is when Remy gets uh, main plate number one, main plate number two, main plate number three, they're all identical, the holes. Okay, they're, and when, yes. he gets, when he gets a main plate, what we're trying to convey to everyone is it's basically the same as if he made it on his Hauser uh, pointer machine. He calls it a pointer, we call it a jig borer over here, mm -hmm. which might have taken him maybe two months. It's raw, I mean, it looks like crap. Seriously, I'm not kidding. Even off the CNC machine, it, it's just the way, it's the, actually the way we ask them to make it if we're getting it from a supplier, right, Remy? So we can finish it. We can decorate it. Uh, we can retouch, we can uh, adjust, and uh, it's, it's a watchmaker hands. You can adjust uh, some of the jewels, some of the, uh, of some of the detail, some of the, uh, the adjust on the watch. And... Uh, for me, the, the CNC machine is not uh, is not a, a bad, uh, bad bad word if I if I can uh, if I can talk uh, that. And um, in 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 I I think for for the people it's uh, it's very easy to use a, a CNC machine, but uh, in real it's uh, it's real complicated. And uh, that's um, uh, that's demand uh, some some of the skills. And many many skills to do uh, right uh, components on the CNC machine. It's not easy. Mm -mm. Yeah, and believe me, I can tell you because I actually had to build. <laughs> my, you know, right, Remy? I, I built my <laughs> own machine. I had one year of school for for CAD and CAM, and then I still don't know shit. <laughs> yeah, then you gotta work. And, you gotta work and do it, and and because watchmaking is there is it, again, it's another like secret part of the watchmaking society that no one knows how to make the main plates even on a CNC machine. So this is what we're trying to convey to everyone, Remy, is that this enables you to make more than one watch a year. And the only thing really, uh, Remy or or other people like us are, are doing is we're having the main plate and some of the bridges made. That's it. I mean, and they're just raw, you know, it's just raw. Yes, no, yes, it's, it's raw. I can show you the parts uh, yeah. after it's a, uh, it's a uh, raw, it's a big, uh, big block of, uh, of grass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not, that's, you know, we, cause people have this bad misconception, Remy, that uh, if you say the word CNC and watch together, that it's, it, it's like ETA, you know, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's not cause they got, I won't even go into it. It's just nothing like that. We're with these very old manual machines. But luckily, Remy lives in a, in a place uh, where there's many people who can get him. I, I, I live in my uh, I, I live in my time, and I can't uh, refuse the modernity. And like that, I switch with uh, with raw components made in CNC uh, way and other components made in traditional way in my workshop. It's, it's a link, it's this link to uh, modernity and tradition and uh, skill, watchmaking skills. And um, I, I, think what we, well, I think what we all should, should really realize is if it's good enough for Roger W. Smith, it's good enough for all of us. It's that simple. That's still handmade. Uh, with just the ease uh, of creating perfect parts from one to another. Wow. Look at that finishing, man. <laughs> the, the, the Ratchet wheel. Yeah, yeah. 
the ratchet wheel. It's I made uh, the ratchet wheel uh, was made uh, traditional uh, in traditional way. Very cool, man. Wolf's it, teeth, wolf's teeth, man. I got one of those in my in my timepiece as well. It's a it's a fantastic way for the lock. Uh, no slip. Yes. Yeah, it locks just beautifully. So if anyone's ever wondered why the teeth are like that, because um, some people might say you might have read somewhere, oh, it's real. Why didn't they just use a regular gear? It's just as good. Well, no, it's not. I don't care what any of you say. If you're a micro mechanic, you know uh, when something has a lot of pressure and it needs to fall into a crevice and you have two opposing angles and they're the same angles, they're going to lock forever. And uh, that's why we use yes. the tooth. It's just a pain he yes. has to make. So the, the, the big companies, they do not want to make this wheel. It's a pain in the ass to get right with the, with the, with the levers that match. So beautiful Perfect. execution, Remy. Beautiful, man. Kick Thank it, you. Bro. Thank you. And then the, the, even down to the, the spring. Uh, spr the spring. The click at spring. The click, which is, the, the, these are the two parts together, yes? Yep. Yes. Yeah, yeah, uh, man. You know, it's oh, oh, okay. I, I, here, we're sitting here at, lost for words because you know, it's just it's. I used the word earlier on. The attention to detail is molecular. It's uh, it really. This is what F. P. Jern saw uh, when he was looking at your at your clock, and uh, you know, and obviously the. the, the the instructors or the lecturers. We, we can see, uh, we can see the, the raw turbine bridge. And uh, raw, if you have the, the yeah. yeah, if you have the, the sorry, the the picture of the finishes, uh, I have uh, we, can, we, yeah. we can, uh, we can show the difference. It's, it's incredible, actually, isn't it? You know, that, uh, yeah. I, 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 I actually should have superimposed one over the other so as we could see the difference. Yeah. But um, yeah, the, the finishing whoever the progression of where he learned from in school to uh, to then uh, going to where he worked it was perfect because he he was surrounded by the best of the best and it's it obviously shows because I'm I'm sitting here just looking at it you know and I think we all are going like wow like uh, that's just thank magnificent, you magnificent are you working on the microscopes for the finishing Remy no or on the manifold glass. Mm. Wow, wow. young eyes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you will buy a microscope eventually. <laughs> I, I, I turn, I turn parts, uh, I machine parts uh, under microscope, but uh, not for the moment the finishing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember those days. Oh, boy. Uh, do you? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I, hate, I, I, hate, I hated microscopes because I have a very unique problem where I have a monocular vision. Uh, so I only see out of one eye at a time. I never see in stereo. As a musician, that's pretty funny too, right? I never see in stereo. Well, <laughs> so if I look I didn't at them, know that was a thing. I yeah, didn't yeah. know that was a thing. Yes, my brain only has can have one eye at a time. Uh, so when I look at a microscope, I, I actually that's how I found out what I had later in life. I was looking through a microscope. And I think I was in school or working in somewhere, maybe show part or somewhere. And someone's like, can't you see the pallet lever? It's, it's not the lock is, you know, you got to adjust the lock on the right pallet lever. And I think this, you, you put it under the microscope the wrong way. There is no right pallet lever. I'm looking at the left pallet lever, bro. What's going on? He's like, wait, get out of the way. Let me see. And the guy looks, because it's there. Can't you see it? And I'm like, no. And then I, I like close one of my, my left eye and then I'm like, oh, there it is. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm so glad to hear this what because I, um, I'm looking at the microscope as far as shit. <laughs> I can tell you. I, 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 I see I'm here, man. Because well, what's really cool is my microscopes here, and I actually, I'm getting two more in here. They have, I put different powers on each one because I only see yes. out of one. So I can have a 10 and I can have a 20 in my microscopes yes. and then it works good. So I, have, I have special talents like Batman and Superman. Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I look at it as a positive, not a negative. Yeah, yeah. Don't so, judge uh, me. Don't judge me. <laughs> but here, another thing about the trivial subscription is the, the dials, too, because the dials are, you know, they're, they're, is, is that uh, aluminium? Uh, no, no, it's steel. 
Steel. Uh, in steel, sorry. In, uh, oh, sorry. In silver. Silver, silver. Silver, yes. sorry, steel. And silver, uh, silver. <laughs> is, it, is it silver, silver or uh, German silver? Silver, silver, not German silver. Mm, it's a silver uh, and uh, and engraver uh, by hand. My master uh, and engraver is a friend. Uh, it's, he do uh, he do on the watch an incredibly uh, job. Is just uh, perfect. Beautiful. And um, the the dial I made uh, all the dial from uh, from a row uh, row plate of silver. My Beautiful. Word. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And and when you receive the the part uh, just engraved, you have many and many pressure to not crush the parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. beautiful. But again, the yeah, yeah. sandblasted. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. See, also uh, be, being able to come up with that technique for uh, for painting. Painting with sand or painting with glass is what Rem we should call it, really. Painting with glass, right, Remy? Uh, he's a we're able to get inside those crevices where, uh, you know, grinding it on a piece of marble uh, with aluminum oxide and, and some olive oil, which is the old fashioned way, uh, would be very difficult to do. So we can satinize parts with glass beading yes. uh, that are internal now. And that's one of the, that's one of the, uh, uh, the wonderful things that we can do if we learn this technique. Remy, do you work alone in your workshop at all times? Yes, yeah. alone. Mm. Yes, do I you work, listen, uh, do work you, alone. Do you listen to music while you work? Uh, yes, yes, yes. What kind of music? Are you a metalhead? Are you a jazz guy? Or oh, you... uh, all, all the music I, uh, I love. In my young age, uh, I love ACDC or uh, <laughs> Iron Maiden. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. And uh, yes, I'm, I listen to all the music, uh, rock, uh, metal, uh, jazz, uh, or some classical. Uh, and, uh, but I, I have preference for, uh, for ACDC. <laughs> ACDC. Okay, cool. You're, you just went up like 50 notches in my book of coolness. Right? <laughs> you can't get much cooler than like ACDC and Maiden, right? You yeah, you got I, 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 I never tour, I never got to tour with ACDC. Maybe obviously, I, I mean, you're young, you don't know, but obviously, I've been on the road, but I've made so many times. It's, it's you know, it's hard to count. And just wonderful people, wonderful human beings. ACDC, I I met them, uh, and they're also very uh, small, like me, Angus and his and his brother, who's passed away now. And yeah, we, 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 they actually actually one night we we met um, backstage, and Steve Harris from Iron Maiden, the bass player, oh. uh, was there. And uh, he made me and Malcolm Young go back to back, you know, to see who was taller. <laughs> <laughs> we're so small, you know, we're both like, I'm five foot one and, you know, they they, they were like ready to take bets and stuff. <laughs> and like, are, are you saying that so Steve Harris has a twisted sense of humor? Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> Like, come on, man, come on, you little guys. Let's see, let's see. <laughs> who, who's the winner, who's the winner, right? <laughs> <laughs> Remy, man, well, like I said, you knocked it out of the park, man. I hope, uh, I hope so, a lot of people get to see this and understand, uh, you know, your your heart that's in this and what it takes uh, to do what you've done at such a young age and your accomplishments. Um, this you haven't even started yet, and you're already like mid steam, and you really came out of the gate with a beautiful design, and you really that's hard to do. I don't know if you understand sometimes. Your first watch or your second watch, yeah, right? You, you, you like you, you nailed it. Perfection, uh, coming. Thank you, coming thank right you very much. Day. And uh, we're all watching you. I know uh, all around the world. We were very proud of you representing um, uh, watchmaking done the correct way. Going to school, uh, you know, placing everything aside to really persevere what's in your heart, and then knocking it out of the park with something like this. I yeah. think pe people should be lining up for your watch, and whatever whatever price range that you ask. Uh, once again, I think it's not enough because remember, an independent watchmaking now, Remy, it's not a watch. It really doesn't need to tell of time, even though we do that. Yes, it it is a reflection of you, and you're an artist, 
painting a picture. You buy, you buy, a, you buy a story. You buy a long time to, to work on the parts. Uh, you buy. A, finally, you buy a, a small parts of my life. That's correct. Without that, a doubt. That's, Without what, a doubt. That's, that's what me and Johnny, right? Johnny would try to show people is there's no smoke and mirrors here. There's no bullshit, right? Yeah. Uh, you through through Instagram, we can show you some pictures and brief moments. Through programs like this, we really get to, to meet someone as talented as Remy, and you get to understand this is not 16 people behind him uh, in an assembly line. You're buying, he just said it, you're buying a piece of his life. Yeah. Okay. So yes. it's a beautiful, it's beautiful. It's the same as hanging a painting uh, on your wall. And, you know, I think in due time, this generation of independent watchmakers are will escalate in price enormously, especially Remy's. This is his early productions. If you're going to get one of the first probably 25 pieces of his, it's, you know, it's an investment for, he's only going to double the price in 10 years. <laughs> you better hurry up. <laughs> well, <I hope. laughs> Working with uh, Groybel Forte, you know, I, I would imagine that mentoring coming from there would be you know, to have belief in yourself and to, uh, to not undersell yourself, and um, you know, I, I actually had one or two more images, uh, Dan, that I wanted to look at, and um, I, I wanted to, to find out a little bit about uh, Remy's tourbillon because the tourbillon has been uh, a central part of his uh, work from the from his clock that uh, that his his school clock, uh, and just to have that beautiful image. Of this, which is the most mesmerizing, hypnotic uh, piece of watchmaking, and it goes back two hundred plus years. So, the finishing on this here, uh, Remy, you you have uh, this is this is all your work, yeah. Uh, for the finishes, everything, yeah. the turbine. Yes, uh, everything. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, Except the, uh, I don't make the, the escapement. It's a uh, Swiss anchor uh, escapement. It's Nibarox uh, escapement, and I modify to uh, to um, to uh, four format turbines. Okay. Again, again, we've said this before, and uh, I'm trying to convey this message. There is one stumbling block for all of us independents uh, being able to make all uh, our movement in house. And that is the escape wheel. We cannot make that wheel uh, in a traditional lever escapement uh, within our four walls. So if anyone is telling you they make all the parts to their watch and they're an independent, believe me, they're not making the escapement, uh, this, the, the escape wheel, uh, except for me, of course, because my escapement is completely different. It's not a lever. Uh, so I'm going to give a shout out to myself and pat myself on the back for that one. I'm, quite, <laughs> I'm, 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 quite I'm messing with you guys. But yeah, seriously, I make my own escape wheel. But, but, that's, that's, but, that, but, but, but but we're going to get into the tourbillon in a second, but that's what, what I'm trying to convey to everyone is that's our open source project. Remy, you know about with me and, and Cyril yes. and, and, and Luke Monet is that we, we want to give this escapement to more people so you can uh, use this escapement and uh, make your own escapement uh, yourself. This the, is the, is the long-term goal for everybody. So, Remy, we, we all know the tourbillon is, is amazing, but what we all want to know is why you didn't cut the hair spring pin. <laughs> why, why I cut the hair spring? The, no, the pin. Why no cut? Ah, uh, for, um, <laughs> uh, for, for me, uh, it's important to, uh, uh, and for information I cut, it's uh, more long. Uh, in, uh, the the pin is uh, more long like uh, like on the photo, and uh, it's for it's for proof and for uh, for show to the people. Uh, I now received the hairspring uh, form uh, by my supplier. Uh, I uh, me when I received the the hairspring, it's a raw spring, and after with uh, with some machine. I uh, cut the hair spring from the right uh, to the right length, sorry. And yeah. after I form the Breguet uh, terminal curve by hand. Yeah, wow. well, well uh, your hair spring 
Stud, the pin. Why do you not cut the pin? Because I I I really uh, love the the, the, the the when you saw the pin, uh, I really uh, it's a detail, but I, I love. I think it's uh, it's change uh, when you look uh, over the, over watches. It's your art. It is, as you say, man. It yeah, is. I swear, I'm, I'm trying to get it out of him, Johnny, right? Yeah. <laughs> right, right so, so everyone, it's, so if you're following along and you do understand, you know, what Remy, what Remy translated there is that he makes his own hairspring, he makes his uh, brigade overcoil, which is the second layer of the hairspring, and we have to pin the outer layer into a stud. And usually that big, long pin you're seeing there, we, we put it in, we flatten the, the hairspring, and, uh, and make it concentric, and then we clip both ends so you don't see the pin. But Remy was like, well, you know what? <laughs> Screw all of you. It looks killer like this, man. And he, that, absolutely. And, and, and he said, if you don't like it, you know what you can do. <laughs> I think that's just badass, man. That's, that, that's what it's all about, Remy. It's your art, too. Do it, any, do it, the, way you, do it the way you want to do it, and don't listen to anybody, bro. I think it's killer, and in fact, I might steal it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's killer, man. That's, you that's, heard it here. That's, that's like you know when I when I started this kind of music that that was inside of me and had it come out. It's the same kind of thing. It's like if you don't like it, you know, go screw yourself. This is, <laughs> it sounds cool. It sounds cool to me, right? So it's the same thing. He's he pinned it. He's like every time I you know because just so again, right? Remy's we clip it right, and then and then the hairspring yes. is. The hairspring, now we have to adjust again, so it saves one step anyway. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, I imagine it would, yeah. That would affect the balance, wouldn't it? It's a pain in the ass. It's a pain in the ass, and truthfully, in, his, in the tourbillon, it looks great. It really does add uh, dimension, and it's beautiful. It's just uh, welcome Thank to independent you. watchmaking. That small thing would have never, in a million years, passed any kind of inspection in a big company. You would have never seen that, and that's in independent watchmaking we get to do our art and that it, is badass it is absolute rock and roll isn't it like you know, yeah so, yeah <laughs> that's it that's that's the that's the coolness factor man hey wait a minute we got is is cools really your last name like like for yes short, for short yeah yes yes that's, that's man that's, that's so cool <laughs> you must have got that in school all the time that's just awesome yes <laughs> Yes. <laughs> no, I've never heard that last name before. That's why it's just, it's you. No. That's it's, why you know you, you guys in America think that you invented cool, but you know cool actually started in Europe. You know what? Well, you know you think he comes out with a badass watch like this. He changed his name. You know he's like. Yeah. You know, <laughs> cool. it's, my, it's my name. It's my name. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. It's it's no, I tell you what. It's um, it, it, it's it's excellent. Like you know, and it it, it suits. Where, where do we have it? Do we have it there? No, I was looking for where you have it engraved. Um, I'll be right back. It, it's I'll be right back. There we go. There we go. And um, so it is, uh, do you know, you, you're, you're getting up and running now, uh, Remy. You're in your new atelier since 2019. And the... How are you coping with the? Uh, is the COVID nineteen affecting your business or? Um, no, uh, no, because I I work alone, uh, and uh, it's uh, it's my for uh, during the, the lockdown. It's uh, it's not a complication for me because I I work alone and. Uh, and after, when I uh, in the lockdown, I work uh, on the prototype, and uh, I I do uh, when I uh, when I want uh, when I want on the prototype. But it's, it um, it was complicated to uh, just for the travel. I can, uh, for example, I mean uh, I'm next to Geneva. It's uh, 40 minutes uh, to my workshop, and uh, during the lockdown, I can't um, I can't go in Switzerland. Yes, mm, yes. Okay. And for that, it's very complicated because I have uh, I have supplier uh, in Switzerland, and I can't uh, and I can't uh, just pick up my uh, my uh, my uh, my parts uh, on the suppliers. It's very it's a complicated period for uh, 
for for the um, the the, uh, the supplier or for travel for uh, for for the supplier. Yeah, it's, it's for actually for the, the, for a lot of people will know that uh, it's this week is uh, Geneva Watch Week, yes. which is uh, it's it's looking like it, it, it's it's a success. Hopefully, it will be safe. Hopefully, whenever people all return back home from it, that uh, it'll it'll all have been good at the end of the day. But uh, I I really miss not being there myself this year. I know that myself and uh, my great friend and uh, partner Pietro Tomayo, we were hoping to be in Geneva this week, and uh, so but for the same reason, Remy, we weren't able to uh, do. Uh, if we arrived at the Swiss border. By the time I left Ireland and arrived in Switzerland, it could be, uh, hey, you have to quarantine for 14 days. And uh, so it just, it was uh, not. You had to quarantine uh, from Ireland? Uh, but it could change on a daily basis, you know. What is that, man? Okay. What is that? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. It's a uh, hairspray. No, no. This, uh, Closer. this is uh, steel, steel bridge for, okay. the, uh, for the dial side. It's closer. Just, just to. Uh, okay. 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 We can see it. To yes. show what what we want to show is, it's raw, just like Remy was saying. It's, when we get stuff. It's blue flame. Uh, blue flame, yeah. Um, it's raw, so we have to do anglage, finish it, um, all the different ways that we choose that we would like our art to look like. So when we're done machining, in our workshops. It's completely raw, and uh, each one of us has our own finishing techniques and yeah. and the way we want our art to be presented to the world. So that those, that's that's what I've been working on the last three weeks, which is all the steel bridges on the dial side, and, uh, and then we start some assembly. Indeed, and just wanted, indeed. Just wanted to kind of re reinstate, you know, and push that uh, this ain't easy. And it's not easy for anybody, and yeah. especially to choose to do it alone, you know, to do what we do. And what Remy does is he gets in his car or on his bicycle, however his transport, whatever his tour, skateboard, whatever his transportation is, that it probably, <laughs> sk probably probably skateboard, and he goes where he is right now, and he has to drive an ambition to do everything uh, to produce that masterpiece you're looking at in that room, and he's all alone. Okay, he doesn't have anyone to answer to, and that's pretty impressive for anybody to see it, and it's it's incredible. Yeah. What other machines do you have in your workshop? You have a Shablin. You have now. You have the Hauser. Uh, yes, uh, if you want, I can. Uh, I can do a little. Uh, a little yeah, yeah, tool yeah. Of my, yeah. Of my workshop, Try that. If you want. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. That would be awesome. I just, I just switch the camera. I no. Uh, we can switch as yes. If 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 this oh. starts working now, I'll go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. I just show you uh, like that. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, it's like okay. That. Yeah. Oh, there you uh, go. Here it's uh, all of the workbench. Uh, here is for assembling uh, the watch and the components, and here is for uh, doing the finishes. Mm. Here it's uh, my uh, collection of uh, watchmaking books. Sorry, it's very complicated to do in the yes, like that. Ah, oh, perfect. Hey, my uh, my French clock, <laughs> two hundred years old lady. Wow. Uh, and here You're frozen. we have we have the the machine to uh, to cut the oh, automatic the uh, hairspring. Uh, yes, it's a sp spiromatic. Yep. And here, uh, all the old machine uh, to uh, I have to to machining to uh, retouch some uh, some parts, and after I can go in the in the machining workshop. Oh, there's a separate secret room. There's a secret room here. Ah, oh, okay. Here is a uh, Chauvelin 102. It's a big uh, watchmaker lace. One or two. Uh, big, uh, big and precise. Mm -hmm. Here. Right. 
Here it's a uh, other machine. It's for uh, control the, the parts with uh, with magnifying glass uh, on the on the machine, and you can uh, you can have um, a zoom on the parts to control uh, the, the, the the correct parts if the parts is correct or not. Comparing it. it's yes, it's an old machine, but uh, no electronics and uh, no problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how you're checking uh, with uh, the wheels and the so gears. We, after yes, 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 yes. So if people understand, we overlay a master of the wheel how it should be, and the wheel we cut the teeth of could be wrong, right? One tooth could be wrong. And it projects that wheel onto the master that we can see through the transparent paper to check our work. Yes. Wow, I, I didn't know. I've not seen that machine before. Mm, there's one behind me over the small one. Uh, Here it's for uh, yeah. it's my workbench for control the um, the parts. Here is a machine for uh, microblasting and the two watchmaker drills. And here is my uh, Chauvelin uh, seventy, and uh, with the microscope. Mm -hmm. And I uh, all of the precision parts uh, of the of the watch uh, are machining on this uh, lathe. Because it's uh, it's it's really incredible the precision uh, you can have uh, on this machine. Uh, for example, for uh, certain parts, I, I can uh, the machine can have the precision of the one or two micron. Mm -hmm. And when the part is so tiny uh, to, uh, to 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 turn, I use the microscope for 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 so uh, what what I do. And you have the gear cutting attachment for that? Yes, here. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I make the wheel, yeah. I make uh, PNU, yeah, I make, uh, make dial, I make uh, all of the parts uh, are, make, uh, are made uh, on this, uh, on this lathe. Did you restore all these machines yourself, Remy? Uh, some of the machine I restore or uh, I clean, not uh, not restore, but I clean and I change uh, the the rusty parts or uh, the parts was broken. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, no, generally uh, I restore myself, but uh, not uh, not a big, big restoration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here, I, I uh, sorry. No, I, I was just going to say, I tell you what, what comes across to me, uh, Dan, is that is one hell of a well-equipped atelier. Yeah, I, I, he's, not, he, he's, he's not done yet. <laughs> let's, I know. let's see more, Remy. Wow. You've been, you've been hiding all this stuff from us. You don't show this on Instagram. There, there's his new machine. That, and uh, here wow. it's, my, uh, it's my jig, uh, jig borer uh, hoser. Uh, this machine had uh, 70 years old and it worked uh, perfectly. And uh, it's a big baby, of, uh, approximately one ton. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not easy to, to transport or to travel with that. But uh, it's, uh, I love this machine and it's incredible. Uh, you, you can do everything on this machine. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have uh, the motor uh, you can send to uh, Luke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the one that, that Luke uh, has come up with a modification for if anyone's uh, watching. Uh, we use a lot of these NSK spindles now. I have my mom machines here too. Uh, back, way back in the, in the dinosaur times when those machines were built, you had to have a motor and a belt, and the motors could only do maybe 3,000 RPM. So our yes, car, it's very complicated to uh, to machining uh, tiny parts with uh, with not a highly rotation of the of the tool. Right. So Luke has come up with a way to modify the hauser to take uh, a spindle that uh, does fifty thousand RPM. So we can yes. we can make a lot more parts, and it's more precise. It doesn't even have a measurable. Right it's, now. it's more. Uh, it's more um, amazing. Uh, re reliable. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it's more, it's more accuracy, and uh, you have no no service to uh, to do on the on the on the motor or on the on the machine. Remy, you should uh, if you do get a chance, post some of those pictures on your Instagram. Uh, we all would like to see uh, your workshop uh, in full like that. You have an incredible workshop. And Thank you. Now, really? No, no, it's 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 
now that you got the Hauser is, is finally complete for where you need to be right now. But th this is what all the collectors should understand what they just saw. Um, that takes a lot of money, a lot of effort, and he has to restore his old machines and take them to someone else and pay them to re help restore the parts that we can't, we can't. So you are supporting our disease of the machines we need, but that disease enables us to do our art. So you're not just buying a watch for someone to, uh, to go get some good French wine. <laughs> <laughs> Right? And some cheese. <laughs> Lots of cheese. Yes. Uh, yeah. It goes right back. <laughs> He's going to go out yeah. and buy another tool. You know, it's, it's, it just helps us along to, to yeah. create. Uh, Remy, you're just, you're just doing it right, man. To have all those machines at your age and have the, the art that the, you're giving to the world is magnificent, my man. Magnificent. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, yeah. I think at that point we could nearly start uh, one of my five minute cheerios mm -hmm. <laughs> well known for at this stage but um so uh, i I just wanted to say that you know that Remy this evening that we have uh, there's been a couple of image as we knew that there's a little bit of freezing of the images and that there but the audio has been perfect um and uh, we've been able to look at really up close in amazing detail at the at the work that you've, you've done and as you know remy i contacted you first about uh about two months ago to do this yes. and it is uh, i'm delighted we finally have had the opportunity to do it uh it would, I, I wish the I, I wish we had had a, a less technical issues with, with the, the video end of it but um Joe, whenever you're doing something, whenever you bring out your, your next creation, uh, I, I would definitely, definitely want to go through it in micro detail again. Mm -hmm. so are you, are you, on that note, Remy, uh, are you, I know you have orders for the subscription and I'm sure there are more and more are coming in. And once the pandemic is over and you can show a little bit more, you will be a very busy man. Mm -hmm. But have you, have you been working on an idea for what will be your next piece? You don't have to tell us what it is, but uh, yes, I you... uh, I have lots of, uh, of ideas and, uh, and projects for uh, for the future. But um, for the moment, I'm uh, really concentrate on the uh, on the manufacturing, the machining, uh, the product, the the watches, uh, the subscription watches, and uh, after. I can uh, I can do uh, my uh, my other project, but uh, yes, I I have uh, I have always uh, project new watches uh, in my in my head, and uh, yes, no no problem for that. <laughs> but uh, now, but now for the moment, I I really I'm really concentrate and uh, really implicate in um, in the the pro the, the the product of the of the of the tourbillon subscription. Excellent. Man. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, I mean, just right, John. Just a great story. I mean, he, you, he, just everything ducks in a row. Uh, the concentration, uh, the, the traditional schooling, uh, the awards, uh, the determination, the experience, all right in a row. And he knows where he's going. Beautiful workshop that uh, that uh, that he can create in. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Everything. Everything about it is. But you know, okay. So I can't make watches, but. I, I can really appreciate uh, the work, the, the workmanship, and the craftsmanship. And that's when I first saw the tourbillon description. Man, I, we we had to get Remy on here, and uh, you know, because if that's all, if that's all I can do is to, uh, to to highlight and bring awareness and shine that spotlight down mm -hmm. that we are doing here on in the metal, and to make people aware that. Do you know, if you look in a high street window and you think, wow, that's watches, you haven't even got scratching the surface, so to speak. No. And, uh, and that's what no. we're doing here. So tonight... No, you, know, you, know, you know, John, before we sign off, I just want to say that, that when, we, when we start out falling in love with watches as watchmakers, we think that same thing too. We see Rolexes, then we see Patek Philippe's, right, Remy? And we're like, whoa, can't wait to get inside a Patek Philippe. But everything's changed now. Independent watchmaking, people like Remy, with their, that's the top. That's that's the top now. Uh, it's not uh, mass-produced timepieces 
with a you know a billion it's dollars. Still, uh, behind it. I, 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 if I think we can't compare uh, um, the. For me, I, I, I don't love to compare uh, some uh, brand to watchmaker or, uh, or other uh, because I, um, we, we do uh, what, uh, what we want and what we love and uh, each watchmaker or brand uh, builds what he wants to build to, to create so for that. And uh, and for that, I'm, uh, I, 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 yes, uh, like, I, like I told you, uh, last minute I, I i don't really love to to compare the watchmaker to to compare the brand uh, and the independent watchmaker or uh, because uh, every people uh, do what they want and uh, after me uh, i do what i want to do and what i love and uh, after uh, for me i'm concentrate on me and not uh, not on the, uh, the over uh, over uh, uh, I, I, I love that attitude. I love that attitude because you That's do. It. Yeah, there is a respect for everybody. Whatever you do, whether someone loves it or whether someone doesn't lo love it, I, I I think there's a respect that goes out. And you know, Patek AP, we were talking, listening this morning to another uh, discussion. You know, they really are independents too because there's the Stern family or they're in, in Patek. They're on a different strata. They're a different level. But uh, you know, it, it's it, it's good to but see it's that. But uh, the brand is a masterpiece of the watchmaking industry, and uh, and uh, the yes, it's a, it's a big big masterpiece of uh, of the watch industry. Yeah, and it makes history. Mm -hmm. Like Patek, Patek makes history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, listen, I want to say, uh, Remy, I, I want to thank you so much for uh, joining us uh, on thank In The Network. Thank you, too, for the invitation. It's, uh, it's a great pleasure to meet you in video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Unfortunately, not in real. But, uh, well, we, we well, look forward to doing it again we, sometime. We will, uh, and in the future, Remy, we'll, me and Johnny will be uh, out and about, you know, with, with my timepiece and when... Uh, the pandemic allows me to travel probably sometime next I year. No problem. Uh, we'll come by and we visit and we, we talk inside the, the workshop. Yeah. Yes, you are, um, always, uh, well, you are always welcome in my, uh, my workshop. And we have some wine and cheese. Look forward to that. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, look, I, I want to thank everybody for uh, for joining us and uh, uh, Cassidy. Thanks for your comment. In this weird time when school isn't really an option, what skills would you recommend uh, a prospective watchmaker to work on while stuck at home? That's uh, quite a question. <laughs> Yes. Um, uh, I think that is one, Cassidy, that at this time we've gone over our 90 minutes, but uh, please come back next time because we will have another fantastic uh, watch, uh, watchmaker with us uh, next week. And um, so, uh, listen, thank you very much, Remy. Thank you for everyone who has joined us once again, who have put up with a little bit of tactical glitches tonight with the imagery, but uh, you, you have been absolutely, you're the lifeblood of, of what we're doing here. You're making it feel that we're doing something worthwhile. And um, so we would like just like to thank everyone for, uh, for joining us. And don't forget that Everything that we're doing here is going on to our website, so you're able to catch up with every episode, uh, and there'll be new parts added to the website in the coming weeks and months. And um, but everyone, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Thank uh, you, thank, thank, you Remy. thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. We again. will see you all again this yeah. time next week on In the Metal Live. Thank you.